Good morning class, today is Thursday, April 30th, and let's get started with some science. So today we're doing a hurricane density lab. Um, when I originally made this lab, it had a lot to do with hurricanes. Now that I've kind of switched it to be part of energy, it doesn't have as much to do with hurricanes, um, but the premise is basically the same. With air and water, temperature really matters when affecting its density. I'm gonna go a little bit faster because I don't want my water to change temperature. So below is a list of three basic things that we need for a hurricane. We need warm ocean water. This gives the hurricane energy for the storm and helps create storm clouds. So we kind of talked about this a little bit in the weather unit. Um, and we talked about how you need this kind of, it needs to start over an ocean and you need these two mixings of air to kind of create that spiral shape. The second thing you need is wind pushing outward and upward, allowing air to rise and also pushing against the storm to help it spin and travel. You need humid, horn, humid storm clouds. These are the clouds that will travel with the hurricane and the same principles apply to ocean water rising and falling based on density. Today we'll be just be Today, will we, today we will just be focusing on how air rises to help form this perfect storm. The question we're asking ourselves today is when we put cold water on top of hot water, this will make the colors mix, or when we put hot water on top of cold water, this will make the colors mix. So do you think that cold, cold on top of hot will mix or hot on top of cold will mix? Write that in your hypothesis space. Um, and then write why you think so in that space. So think for yourself for a minute, what's the independent variable? What are we changing? What's the dependent variable? How will we measure it? And what are the things that we need to keep the same to keep this experiment fair? So our independent variable, sometimes people think it's the temperature, which is really confusing. It's not the temperature. What's actually um, the difference here is the way in which we stack the bottles. So which one's on top of the other? Because these bottles themselves are not going to change. What's going to change is what order they are on top. The dependent variable, how we will we, how will we measure it, is going to be seeing whether or not these two colors mix. What are the things we need to keep the same to make the experiment fair? So I actually have water in both of these. If I had salt water, that would totally mess up my experiment because we know that salt water makes something more dense. Um, excuse you. That's my dog. Um, we know I have two of the exact same bottles of water, and so I have about the same amount of water. Um, you do not have to do this experiment at home. As a matter of fact, I kind of recommend not doing it at home because it can get very messy very quickly. But if you are, you need two water bottles that are almost exactly the same size. If we were in school, I would have used an Erlenmeyer flask, but you know, we're dealing with what we got here. You definitely need something that has a lip like this that you can line up. Otherwise, it will absolutely be a classic mess. You also need a puppy who's not biting at you because that can be very distracting. <laughs> so you can see my yellow or orange, it's kind of an orangey yellow, is mixing in. Super disadvantage of food coloring is it always gets your, fan, your hands all messy. Now I'm gonna put some blue food coloring in this one. Wah, wah. While this is kind of mixing in, let's remind ourselves of our ocean continent and ocean zone songs. One, two, three. I'm heading out to the ocean sea, 70% with high salinity. I'm heading out to the ocean sea. Stop the shelf, the continental shelf of the ocean sea. Not too deep, just perfect for me. The continental shelf of the ocean sea. Stop the slope, the continental slope of the ocean sea. Water gets deep, oh so quickly. The continental slope of the ocean sea. Stop the rise, the continental rise of the ocean sea. Bump at the bottom from depositing. The continental rise of the ocean sea. Stop the abyss. Remember the abyss is the ocean floor. Okay, and then we have our ocean zone song. We have epileptic zone sunlight, zone sunlight, zone sunlight, sunlight zone. Mesopelagic zone twilight, zone twilight, zone twilight, twilight zone. Bath opelagic zone midnight, zone midnight, zone midnight, midnight zone. Okay. So now our water is fully incorporated with the colors. The color is obviously just so that we can see. The water would still stack or not stack if it wasn't there. It's just so that we can actually see that happening. So let me see. 
The first one we're going to do, as you see in, oh, sorry, the data type that we have here is we're going to collect qualitative with words. We're not collecting any numbers. So we're going to start with yellow on top of blue. I'm going to back up my computer because safety first in science, we want to make sure that if something does go wrong, um, I still get my security deposit back. So I'm going to use this whiteboard. This is why I don't recommend doing this experiment at home. And I'm realizing now that this whiteboard is a terrible idea and I'm looking for something else. I'll be right back. Brew. Okay, so never mind. We're going to use a plastic lid because we have to be inventive. I would usually use a playing card in my classroom, but I've looked and we don't have any playing cards in my house, so this is not going to work either. <laughs> I'm so nervous about flipping this in front of my computer, but I don't want to re-record this because I'm only doing this once. Okay, standing up. Three, two-ish. Oh, yay. Okay, we're lining it up. We're lining it up. Again, this is why this is a not recommended at home experiment, especially not with Crazy Dog, who is definitely breaking my concentration here. Okay, so it made a little bit of a mess, but we can totally see that it is working. So I have my yellow on top and my blue on the bottom. You can see they mixed here a little bit. This is the warm one, this is the cold one. Normally I would have a student come up and verify that for us, but again, we're dealing with it. Before this mess like leaks to my computer, let's flip it upside down so they didn't mix. That's what you should be recording. One, two, three. So as you see, when I flip it over, it totally changes. That's why I use blue and yellow is because we can see that they're actually mixing together. So I'm going to pause this so I get a chance to clean up the mess. Boom, it's like magic. It's all cleaned up. So let's get back to the rest of this experiment. <laughs> um, so when we put the blue on top of the water, they mixed. We didn't even have to wait the full 30 seconds. Um, so I want you to think back to when we were talking about matter. Matter is a fancy name for stuff. And we did our song, liquid to a solid is called a freezing. Solid to a liquid, it melts back again. Liquid to a gas is called evaporation. Gas to a liquid is condensation. So think about it. When I have things that are warmer in my liquid phase, they're closer to being a gas, right? So they're moving further apart. When I have colder water, it's closer to being a solid. So my particles are closer together. So when I have particles that are closer together, it's going to weigh down my water. My water is going to be heavier. That's why colder water sinks. And my warmer water is going to be more spread apart. So it's going to be less heavy and it's going to rise. So conclusion, what can you conclude about your data? What kind of water rises? So you need to tell me whether your hypothesis was verified or falsified and why. Circle the conclusion. Is hot water more dense or less dense than cold water? Cold water is more or less dense than hot water. Cold water has particles that are close together or further apart. Hot water has particles that are closer together or further apart. Oh, sorry. Um, and so this one would be the hot water is, uh, sorry. The hot water is less dense, cold water is more dense, cold water has particles that are closer together, hot water has particles that are further apart. So for our response, what happens to water molecules as they are cooled, and which of the following best describes the layers of the oceans, and which of these layers has the highest salinity? Answer those. So the answer to these is, um, as water is cooled, the particles move closer together, making the water more dense. Number two would be the uh, D, the trenches are the most dense because they are the deepest and the coldest. 
and which layer has the most salinity would be D, the trenches. So whatever's on the bottom has the highest salinity because all that salt is falling. Um, so the other thing that we are gonna do today is we're gonna do the hop, skip, jump. So this is what our hop looks like. Feel free to pause if you need to take a second to look at this because you don't have your science book at home. This is what our skip looks like. Um, copy this down, pause for a second if you don't have your book at home. And our jump is just a coloring page. So if you don't have your book at home, I want you to make your own map of the ocean. For those of you who do have your book at, the ho at home, I want you to try to add in some features that you might expect in each of those zones. So for example, you might want to draw lots of seaweed in the sunlight zone. All right, and then our answers are shown. Oops, that's a hurricane density lab. And here are hop, skip, jump answers. So... Here's the skip, and don't worry about the, the jump. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today for science. I'll see you in a little bit for language arts. Adios.